Dear subscribers, in this quick video I want to show you the very first steps with the amazing page builder Visual Composer. Please be don't be confused right now that the video is not moving. This is just uh, the introduction that I added earlier to a video that I recorded some time ago. Uh, and now the actual video starts. Thanks for watching and please subscribe my channel. Okay, so when you have the Visual Composer installed, you see this element here on every a page of the WordPress, um, especially if you create new pages or if you edit pages, then you have this element at the top, which actually shows you that you have two different options of making use of the Visual Composer. So you either use the backend editor or the front end editor. The front end editor, I want to show you in the beginning, um, is basically exactly what you expect. So you have a what you see is what you get a VisiVic editor where you work on the layout of your web page from the front end which is visible to the customer or to the visitor of the website. In this case you don't have to switch back and forth between the back end and the front end and you can just add elements here and you click on new row for example and uh, then exactly where you have this row you can enter further elements, let it be a button and you can just yeah leave it like it is. It says click me and it has a certain style and when you save it and close this window here then you have a button here. Of course you could align it to the center and stuff but on the website you will see that this button is exactly at this location and there are no weird surprises about the style or anything else because in the backend you don't have an immediately preview how the website looks but of course you have a couple of more options because you have all these other options available that you're familiar with maybe already in WordPress and uh, yeah you can use this update and uh, preview changes button where you can actually then see the changes that you made via this website I for myself actually don't use uh, the front end editor. Um, I think it is even, uh, it uses a little bit more of resources from your computer because of course the whole website has to be updated and displayed all the time when you change the add elements. So I actually don't want to use this front end editor, but you can if, you, if it's uh, fitting more for you. and. Um, yeah, let's now have a look at the backend editor. So this is very nice. Actually, you also have a classic mode, which is quite cool, but only if you have some elements already implemented. So let's add some example elements. I add a new row at first. This should be the first step that you always do because your website is basically made up of rows. Um, what actually happens is that a div container is created as soon as you create a new row but that shouldn't be of any concern for us for now and um, yeah via this pluses you can add further elements either below this row you have this plus and then you can either add a new row or add some text without a row or actually what is happening is that it automatically creates a new row and inside already a text block. So we don't want to do that. And we also get rid of the second row. And this plus inside the row lets you add elements directly to this row as we just saw. So this would be the same effect of just clicking the text block without a row. Now, what we can also do, because at the moment you can see that this row is only made up of one column. So you can click on these or you can hover over this little gray box here and then you get a couple of more elements that lets you create really, really nice customized layout. For example, if I click on this second box here, then this row is all of a sudden made up of two different columns. So I have two pluses and two places, locations, where I can add new elements. So I could create a two column text in uh, for our website. So this is also very, very brilliant. Let's have a quick look how that looks uh, in real. 
to the visitors of our website I click on preview changes and then I have this two columns of text which is very very handy for a lot of long text because it's much easier to read and depending on the length of the text here then of course the height of the row changes as well here so this is one really nice way to create layouts another way is to just have text on the left and for example an image on the right so you can use this single image element here so we would just have to select any image unfortunately there are no default images available let's have a look let's just go for this surfing image it's a little bit too big for that small location that I create on the website but for this purpose it's all right I'll just leave it as large here but the alignment of the image should be center and that means that it will be centered within the right part of this website in the second uh, in the right column it will be centered so if we preview it changes now then instead of the text we have a wonderful image here on the right and the text would be here on the left this is one very very common and beautiful way to make an amazing layout and one amazing thing also happens so if I resize the browser window that would be what happens on a mobile phone for example if I visit the website on a mobile phone you see that the right column will be pushed below the left column and the text is on top so it is immediately responsive without any additional settings by yourself you don't have to take care of anything else anymore really really beautiful okay so you already saw that when we click on this little plus anywhere actually you have this big library this big choice of elements available and it's just too many to grasp so don't even try to click on all of them slowly slowly become familiar with all of these elements not all are great actually um, but a lot of them are really useful and in the next video i will show you a couple of them how to uh, use them to make professional layouts and uh, yeah i can tell you some of them are really really professional like this google map which gives you a full width google map of a certain location maybe of a business that you want to show on a website uh, there's another google maps element so you even have two choices for this and uh, you have this action box what i was talking about earlier and you have this facebook social links and ton of options so these are only that many because we have this ultimate uh, visual composer add-ons plugins also installed so all of these only come with this additional plugin that i showed you earlier and yeah here on top of them are basically all the um, categories of the elements that are in here these are all of them then you have just some content elements some for the structure uh, yeah some default wordpress widgets and uh, yeah these depreciated ones should not be used officially anymore because they will not be updated by visual composer anymore and uh, yeah for example if you install the woocommerce plugin that i show you later on uh, which you can use to create online shops in your wordpress website then you get another category here of amazing plugins um, or widgets actually rather that you can use with the visual composer